The key to getting shredded has nothing to do with how much you ate, but what you ate. In this video, I'll share why the traditional approach to weight loss is completely flawed. I'll show you why a high fat diet can be the literal most effective approach for getting you from something like this to something like this without having to suffer through constant hunger or restrictive calorie counting. I'll go over why eating foods like this are the best thing you can do for your health and your metabolism. And I'll share some simple tweaks you can make to your eating habits that will allow you to actually eat more food while losing fat, all without needing to count calories. But first, let me explain what happens when you try to lose weight the traditional way. So, here's why you're struggling to get lean with the traditional approach. Firstly, people are just eating way too many fucking carbs. Like, people are eating like hundreds of grams of carbs every meal, just like rice, sugar, potatoes, like noodles, pasta. It's just completely unnecessary. Let me tell you why. So firstly, fat is a really poor energy source. So your body can get energy from two sources, carbs and fats. Why is carbs a poor energy source? So your body can only store up to 2000 calories of carbs at a time in the form of glycogen in the muscles and glucose. Whereas it can store up to 40,000 calories for an average person of calories um, on the body. So 40,000 calories versus 2000 calories, like which one do you have more of? Obviously your body is designed to use fat as fuel if it's gonna store this much for you to use. Otherwise, what the fuck is it there for? Um, so that's the first reason. Second is eating too many carbs spikes your insulin. So insulin is a hormone that is secreted by the kidney as a response to carbohydrates. And it does this to blunt the blood sugar response when you eat too many carbohydrates. As a result, um, this increases your hunger and it stops your fat burning. So insulin is the, think of it as the gatekeeper for fat loss. When insulin is high, it is hard for your body to tap into its fat stores. And as a result, this decreases your fat metabolism. So when you stop eating carbs and you keep your insulin low, that allows your body to tap into its fat stores. Um, the next reason why too, eating too many carbs is bad is it is empty calories. So there is no such thing as an essential carbohydrate for human health. If you just cut out all carbohydrates, you would survive 100% fine. There is no biological human function that requires carbohydrates, but it requires proteins and fats. That is just a fact. Like carbohydrates is just empty calories. It's peasant food. Like think about like villages and like old kingdoms um, when you've got all these peasants in the fucking towns and they're struggling to get by. What do they eat? They eat like fucking bread, potatoes, um, just like they just scavenge whatever empty carbs they can get. Whereas you th if you think about the, like the kings and the royals, they're eating all these juicy fatty meats because they're full of nutrients. So yeah, why do you wanna eat peasant food? It's not doing you any good. Next, carbs are just extremely fucking hyper palatable, like so delicious. Think of like your cookies, your pizza, your ice cream, like your potato chips. Um, these things are just really fucking easy to overeat. Like if you have a bowl of pasta, a bowl of rice, you can just eat that endlessly. It, it's just ridiculous. These things, because they're so devoid of any nutrients, when you're eating, your body wants nutrients, but then all you're giving it is just calories without any nutrients, all these empty calories. So your body isn't actually, your brain isn't actually thinking, oh, I've got all the nutrients I need. So it's just gonna make you keep on eating. And so the last reason you're not able to get lean is because obviously you're not eating enough meat slash fat or protein slash fat. So, why is a low-carb, high-fat 
method superior for fat loss, aka keto, aka carnivore, depending on how you approach it. Firstly, like we spoke about, lowered insulin. So lowered insulin levels means you have, firstly, an increased metabolic rate because it allows your body to tap into its fat stores and actually burn that as fuel. There are studies showing that people with lowered insulin levels have up to a 30% increase in metabolic rate. So they looked at people with type 1 diabetes, which are people that can't create insulin, insulin on their own. And these people had metabolisms like two to 300 calories more than what they should have, just because their insulin was low. As a result of that, uh, you also have lower cravings, less hunger, just because your blood sugar isn't spiked all the time. And you're allowing your body to tap into its fat stores as fuel. So your body isn't craving food all the time because like I said, you have 40,000 calories of food on your body and you're actually allowing your body to use that as fuel when you stop eating carbs and you have lower insulin. And all of this leads to a calorie deficit. So a calorie deficit still matters at the end of the day. Anyone that says so otherwise is just being silly. But this method allows you to tap into this calorie deficit a lot easier. It's just effortless compared to a high carb approach. Um, as a result, you'll have more energy as well. Like I said, you have 40,000 calories of fat, of energy on your body compared to 2,000 when you're using carbs. So all you need to do is lower the carbs and get fat adapted and then you can tap into these 40,000 calories. Next re reason is hormonal health. So if you didn't know, fats, particularly cholesterol, play a crucial role in the production of your hormones, uh, especially your sex hormones. Um, cholesterol is a precursor to sex hormones like testosterone. So if you eat more of these, you will have better hormonal health. Again, leading to more energy, leading to more of a calorie deficit. And also just having higher testosterone levels will make it easier for your body to burn fat and build muscle. It just makes you a more efficient body, just a more efficient energy burner in general. Next reason is satiety. So High protein, high fats food are really satiating for your body because it's giving you all the nutrients you need. Um, it's giving your body all the protein it needs so it, your body understands I don't need any more protein so I can stop eating and it's giving you all the fats, it's giving you all the energy you need so your brain's like, oh, okay, I've got everything I need. I don't need to keep eating. That's why it's so hard to overeat things like steak, eggs, chicken breast. Like you're just never gonna overeat this stuff. It's only when you throw in like rice, pasta, that you start eating too much. And so since this kind of foods is so satiating, it makes it really easy to fast. Um, it makes it really easy to go one to two days without, <laughs> it makes it really easy to only eat one or two meals a day. Because like I said earlier, you're tapped into your food stores. You have 40,000 calories of food on your body that you, your body can actually burn instead of needing to eat like every two, three hours. Also, ketones are very muscle sparing. So when you eat low carb, high fat, your body is producing ketones and ketones are inherently muscle sparing, meaning that you can be in a calorie deficit and you won't lose as much muscle. Um, this is why you can eat a even moderate to low protein diet, as long as you're keto and you won't lose much muscle. Next reason, obliterates cravings. We kind of spoke on that already. Thermic effect of food. So the thermic effect of food is when you eat food, it takes energy for your body to break down and digest that food. And protein has a higher thermic effect of food. So when you eat, let's say you eat 100 calories of protein, it'll take your body 20 to 30% of those calories to actually break down the food. So net, in the end, you're only ingesting about 
70 to 80 calories even though the label says 100 calories. So that's why it makes it, again, harder to overeat when you eat like this. Uh, next, you get to eat yummy foods. You know, you get to eat all these things that people previously thought were forbidden or bad for you. Things like butter, cream, cheese, bacon, meat, eggs. Like, yeah, look at this, look at this stuff. Who wouldn't wanna eat these all day? Like unlimited amounts, all the bacon you want, all the butter you want. You can even, I even put butter in my fucking coffees, like, and no calorie counting. You can eat as much of this stuff as you want. Who wouldn't want that? Come on now. And lastly, you have nothing to lose. Like, if what you've been trying for the last three, six, 12 months hasn't been working, what makes you think the next three, six, 12 months will be any different? If you try this, the worst thing that can happen is you just end up in the same position. But the best thing that can happen is you completely change your life. So you really have nothing to lose here. So that's why. Now, let's go into how to get started. Here's a full roadmap for you to get started with keto if you're interested. Let's go over the macros first. So. Generally, you would want roughly 70% of your calories coming from fat, 30% of your calories coming from protein, and then less than 20 grams of carbs a day. An easy way to achieve this macronutrient breakdown is to just go one gram of fat for every gram of protein. So if you just look, if you just measuring stuff out or even just looking at your plate. Um, if you just make sure you have roughly one gram of fat for every gram of protein you eat, that will roughly equal a 30% to 70% ratio. Simple, but if you do not want to track, um, an easy way to track how much, to gauge how much to eat is just to eat to satiety. It's really fucking simple. If you just eat like this, you eat meat, butter, bacon, eggs, low carb, high fat. You can eat to satiety, so eat until you're full. And this will pretty effortlessly get you to 15% body fat. Like I can attest to that. No calorie counting. Um, as long as you just try to keep in mind to try to get a gram of fat for every gram of protein. But if you do want to track, if you like tracking for some reason, or if you've been eating like this for a while, you've got to 15% body fat and you haven't seen any more weight loss progress, then you can start to track. So what you would do is just calculate your maintenance calories, use any online calculator, there's like a million online. Let's say your maintenance works out to be 2,500. If we were to break that down between 70% fat, 30% protein, 20 grams of carbs, that will roughly equal 194 grams of fat, 187 grams of protein. And then so you can just try to eat like this every day and then gradually decrease five grams of fat and five grams of protein every week. So just taper that down week by week until you hit your weight loss target. Or if you don't wanna do that, the other method which I like and which I like to do is playing around with your fasting protocol. So if you're eating like a traditional diet right now, you're probably eating around the clock all day, like, I don't know, three, four, five meals every three, four hours. Um, but as you start to eat low carb, high fat, you will notice that you will naturally fall into a fasting pattern. Um, so you can start with a 12-12 fasting pattern, meaning that you eat for 12 hours of the day and then you Sorry, you fast for 12 hours of the day and then you stop eating for 12 hours of the day. Then you can progress to a 16-8, meaning you fast for 16 hours of the day and then you eat for eight hours of the day and then you can go 18-6, 24 and then you can go one meal a day once a week and then you can start adding in more OMAD days, OMAD, meaning one meal a day. So for example, right now, 
I only eat one meal a day, once or twice a week, and then the rest of the days I'm eating 24 or 18 six. So you can really play around with these and just gradually add in those OMAD days as you need. And if this seems intimidating or like ridiculous, that's because you're barely fat adapted. As you eat this way more, you will become more and more highly fat adapted, meaning your body is more easily able to tap into its body, into its fat stores, and it can access those 40,000 calories like we spoke about. So you won't feel the need to eat every few hours. Once you're really fat adapted, you can eat one meal a day easy. Like you can go 23 hours a day just without thinking about food because you have so much food on your body already. So this is a really easy way to get super shredded and not track calories and just play around with your fasting protocol. Like I'm between these two right now. I haven't even gotten here and it's gotten me pretty fucking lean. So yeah. All right, so what to eat? Pretty simple. For your fats, you wanna go olive oil, butter, coconut oil, ghee, tallow. You just wanna stay away from seed oils like sunflower oil, grapeseed oil, canola oil. Um, all that industrial process stuff, stay away from. Nuts, I've got highlighted because although they are a decent source of protein and fats, they're very calorie dense and very easy to overeat. So I wouldn't eat unlimited amounts of those. I would have those sparingly if you want to get lean. Protein, pretty simple, just meat, eggs. Eat as much of those as you want. Low carb fruits I've highlighted as well because although berries are very low carb fruits, like you can eat a few handfuls a day and still stay in ketosis, um, that's where I would cap it, a few handfuls a day. Low carb veg, you can eat vegetables if you want. I don't believe vegetables are, op are necessary for optimal human health, but if you like them, you can include them. Just make sure they're low carb veg, like greens, broccoli, cauliflower, pickles. I actually really like pickles and kimchi and onion and mushroom. That's why I put them in here. Um, but I don't really eat any greens, leafy greens, like yucky stuff like broccoli, uh, just because I don't think you need them. But if you like them, eat them, they're fine. Dairy, I've also highlighted red because um, extremely easy to overeat. Like heavy cream, cheese, milk, butter, definitely good for you but the calories can add up quick. So just use it sparingly. They are kind of hard to overeat. Um, cheese is the only one that I would actually be mindful of because, so I just found this out the other day. Cheese, ha they have these things called casomorphins. And I think that's a merge of two words, casein and morphine. Um, so cheese has case, a high concentration of casein proteins in it. And these caseins can activate the morphine receptors in your brain. These are the same receptors that get triggered when you have, um, I believe it's like heroin and, and opioids. Um, and so they have a very addictive, uh, addictive, personality to them. I can't remember the word I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, they can be very addictive in a like neurological way. So um, just be a bit careful with cheese. Like I find I can overeat cheese really fucking hard if I don't be careful with it. But other than that, pretty simple list. Just eat lots of meat, eggs, fats, simple. Um, yeah, so another way to simplify this is to just go carnivore. A carnivore diet is pretty much it, like a low carb, high fat, high protein diet. Um, keto is just a less restrictive version of carnivore. It's kind of like easy mode, like or like light mode for people that can't go full carnivore because I don't know, they're not mentally ready for it. Um, but if you can, like I think it is ideal to just go carnivore. Like I'm pretty much a 90% carnivore, um, mostly just meat, eggs, a bit of low carb fruit. Um, I guess I use a bit of sauces and seasoning that isn't carnivore. And I eat nuts occasionally. 
um, and a few veg here and there, but I'm like 90% carnivore. And I think going carnivore is ideal. Like it'll make your life really fucking easy. You don't have to track calories. You get really fucking lean, simple. Um, this is kind of the opposite of what we spoke about. So foods to avoid. Pretty self-explanatory, grains and starches, sugar, sugary foods and drinks, most fruits besides berries, um, starchy vegetables, potatoes, sweet potatoes, things like that, legumes and beans. Um, an easier way is to you just start being mindful of nutrition labels. So whenever you're buying something from the supermarket, just look at the label. Has it got proteins? Has it got fats? What's the carb level? And just look at that and stay away from high carb stuff. Really easy. So adaptation period. Some, most people find that um, starting this way of eating, they feel kind of shit for two to three weeks. They feel a bit sick, low energy, just weaker. Um, they might even feel like they have symptoms like of a flu. And generally, this is because of a lack of sodium. So when you enter ketosis, your body is, your body excretes more, your kidney excretes more sodium than normal. And so an easy way to counteract this is to have two to three grams of sodium per day. And this should get rid of most of the low energy and like the weakness symptoms. Um, but if not, give it two to three weeks and you'll be fine. Lastly, how long should you eat like this? So a lot of people will say this is unsustainable and this is restrictive. And yes, I agree. It is probably not sustainable for most people for a lifetime. I definitely do not plan to eat like this for my lifetime. Um, I just wanna see how lean I can get like this. Um, maybe 10%, 8% body fat, I don't know. But you should eat like this until you reach your goal. So whether that's 15% body fat, 12%, 10%, 8%, as long as it takes. The idea is that we don't want something sustainable. It's, diets aren't sustainable. We're just using it as a tool to get to where we want to get. And then when you've gotten to where you want to get, then you can slowly reintroduce things. You can slowly reintroduce the least toxic carbs, um, maybe a bit more fruit, a bit more honey, and transition to a more animal based with fruits kind of diet. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't do this forever. It's not sustainable, but it's easy and it is a tool to get me to where I want to go. Um, and yeah, that's about it. That is everything. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little presentation. Uh, I certainly enjoyed connecting my ideas using a mind map. Um, thought it might be a bit easier to digest and understand and easier to present. So hope you enjoyed that. And yeah, thank you.